Hello everyone. It's been a minute since I've made a YouTube video. I apologize for that. I unsubscribed from my Adobe Premiere Pro package, which I was using to edit videos. And then about a year later, someone was like, yeah, just use DaVinci. It's free. And I was like, really? <laughs> DaVinci? So I got it and we're going to use that to edit this video, I hope. Uh, hopefully it works as well as Premiere did. <laughs> I don't know. Haven't tried it yet, but we're going to give it a shot. Today we're going to do a little sketchbook tour. I just finished this one. It uh, took me quite a while. 8.23 was August 23rd until yesterday, May 4th. It's a Cottonwood Arts book. It's one of my favorite sketchbook brands. It's like a small family-owned business in California. They got all sorts of stuff for different artists. Um, these are recycled paper, and they work really great. So I like using these. And the sticker on the front is for my bud T.O. is drawing. Um, you can find on Instagram, Twitch, other social media, I'm sure. This sketchbook has some figure drawing in the front half from live figure drawing sessions. I think it has some design work, a couple of like cartooning things, the odd illustration here and there. Lots of really terrible sketches, I'm sure. And also a lot of animals from the zoo that I drew at the zoo. So let's get into it. I usually have a couple sketchbooks going at a time. This time I really had quite a few sketchbooks, so that's why this took me so long to fill. It's kind of a big sketchbook too. These are usually if there's a number up here and it's a naked person, that means that's how long the pose was. So this was like a 10 minute pose, five minute pose. And I don't know why I was just going Going straight in with ink on these. It was bold, but it's good good practice to do. And they turned out pretty good. Um, I need to get back and do some more life drawing. These feel so long ago now, but I haven't done that much life drawing since these. Really great model. They model all over the place in uh, Washington. Pretty great. I think that was the best one of the day, and then I accidentally smudged it right there. What a bummer. But I was working on, uh, I had this pen, actually. It's just a very nice, like, Kuretake pen, which is currently out of ink. I need to solve that before these bristles get any more, um, must. <laughs> Bent out of whack. I don't know. Um, figure drawing is interesting because you like don't really have time to be super analytical often. You sort of just have to pump it out. So it's a good way to practice like line work on the fly, which is why I brought a brush pen. I think this is a Lego model made by um, Tanks Uwu on Instagram that I was sketching. I get a lot of inspiration from Lego modelers on social media. They make really great stuff. That's just a little sketch, uh, like a thumbnail, sort of. I was trying out a pose before I did it on a commission. Kind of like a boxer girl. It's kind of a wasted page, but I think I had big smudge happening, so. All right, here's the uh, cartooning designs that I was working on. I think this is supposed to be like a Democrat. That was the idea. Very exaggerated cartoon Democrat donkey. Um... Cartooning is hard. People think it's like easy, but to make something simple that looks good and is like exaggerated, that's like really hard to do well. Um, so this is kind of like one of my first like forays into an actual character design in that realm. And I think I did these while I was at like a little art market. So I just kind of almost doodle like I was just throwing them out with not much like reference or inspiration around me. Lots of different head designs, trying things. There's going to be a lot of bad drawings in here or like kind of pointless pages. Like this was actually, I know I was at the art market because I had to go to the bathroom. So I just wrote this and put it on my desk and then ran to the bathroom real fast. But um, the point of a sketchbook is to mess around, try new things, work it out. I don't have one of those every page masterpiece sketchbooks like some people do. Um, and I got to make sure I remember that. That's okay because, you know, 
if I flipped through this before I started recording, I'd probably like convince myself not to do it because of some of the bad drawings. But again, this is uh, like almost a year old now. So it's kind of like if I did any of these drawings again today, they'd probably be a lot better. So I just got to remember that. Uh, these are some sellers um, across from me at this art market. And they were not very happy. They sold like custom jewelry. And I don't think they sold a single thing. And to be honest, I only sold like three things at this market. It was kind of a dud, but they were really salty. Okay, what? Oh, I actually know what this is. This is me and this is my partner, Casey. I was trying to draw with my eyes closed. Like this is a blind contour drawing, self-portrait of me and then of my partner, Casey. There's something about them that kind of works. I don't know. It's... And then that is, I don't know what that is. I think that was also like draw a person from memory, but I don't know who it was. I don't think it was supposed to be me. It doesn't look like me. So I don't know what's going on with all this empty space. It's kind of a waste. Oh, speaking of which, it's okay. This was a 10 minute sketch of a Victorian lady. All right. For a while, I was hosting a Saturday sketch night on Twitch. I kind of stopped doing it because people weren't showing up for it. And I already sketch all the time. So, like, I don't need to make a whole event out of it if no one's going to take part. So, um, but we basically just get together, pick a topic, and then um, do, like, a kind of intense dynamic sketching type of study. So, this is um, a potter wasp. And we drew like a top view, some good side views, trying to get the proportion, figure out some shapes. I got a nice like C curve with an S curve and all that. And then we drew some more kind of closer uh, shots with more detail, different poses. I think there's another page here. Yeah. All in all, pretty fun. Used to do that kind of stuff every week, but uh, I don't do as detailed studies like that anymore. I probably should, but you know. Um, that's my guy Phil Collins. It's a kind of an iconic photo of him with the tambourine in his pants. I don't know why the tambourine is in his pants, but are you gonna are you gonna fault him for that? Are you gonna like call him out on it? I don't think so. It's kind of a this this drawing like doesn't really belong in here, like. There's a lot of interesting things in here, but this is sort of a, a unicorn. All right, here begins the zoo drawings. And after this week, when I drew these, I started going every week and sketching. And it's been like highlight of my week. I love it. So um, I don't really do very analytical drawings. And I also don't like focus in on one area of study each week because I have a yearly membership. So I can go back every week. So I'm kind of just like, instead of like saying, I'm going to go and study gorillas this week and doing like a in-depth gorilla study week, like I'm going to go back and draw the gorillas next week. It's going to be in-depth after I've done that for a whole year, right? So it's been kind of nice. Like I just got to walk around the zoo if an animal's not out or if they're like very active. Um, I won't sketch. Maybe I'll take photos if they're out. Um, but it lets me kind of be more discerning about which topics I choose each week because I know that the next week I go back, they'll be there. So some of these sketches are kind of quick gestural contour drawings. Some have a little bit more shading and like detail. Um, I do some that are just purely silhouette, some that are like unfinished because the animals went inside or moved. But it's the best. So these are orangutans. We got a rhino, um, patas monkeys, hippos. These are some uh, bear gestures. There's two adolescent female bears. One's a grizzly and one's a just like a brown bear um, named Fern and Juniper. And they're very cute and they bumble around. And what's crazy is, I don't remember when exactly I drew this, probably late January. But the bears now in May look totally different. They've grown way up and they're much less fluffy and they're way less clumsy. So it's, it's interesting and kind of fun about going to the zoo and drawing is over time you get to see the animals change and like adapt and act differently depending on the seasons. 
So that's kind of fun. Like there's some um, adolescent gorillas there that if I go for a couple years, I'll get to like actually see them grow up in real time and have documented it all through my sketches, which is super cool to me. Some snowy owls, kind of like more of a caricature vibe here. Just like really funny little shapes. These are very loose drawings. Um, I hadn't really built up enough confidence yet to just like go for it unless the animal was asleep. But now I'm feeling like in the later sketches in this book, I think they're a lot more confident and um, informed from all of the sketching that I did. Like I, if the animal moves while I'm drawing, I can like almost confidently finish from memory um, the pose because I've drawn it so many times. I've learned the forms. This is a stellar sea eagle. Right now they're laying an egg. So you can't go into their enclosure, but you can peek through the window and see them up in their giant nest, and they're sitting on an egg. So there'll be chicks soon. And then this is Deeran. I think this, I think this is Deeran. I drew this um, snow leopard about a week before it died. Pretty cool. Another kind of like interesting documentation moment. Like, you know, that's kind of special. Uh, here's a gorilla. I don't think I actually drew this at the zoo. I just drew this at home, but it's, a, it's kind of a nice drawing. I feel like from here up, it's a nice drawing, and then it just kind of becomes a mess, which it's kind of how their fur is. It's just chaos. But this is definitely at the zoo. Um, they have like a farm area where you can pet the animals and hang out with them. So these are some, I think, African pygmy goats is what they're called. That's a kune kune pig. Really big feller. There's some steer. I drew that one. It was right up um, at the fence, so I could give him little scritches. It's a very good model because he wanted me to pet him. So, And then that, I need to learn this rabbit's name. There's never a zookeeper around when I'm drawing him, but it's a giant literally a giant rabbit um it's huge and it's so cute and it's always just like chilling in its box under the lights um posing really really well so i need to ask like what its name is but there's a cow ear i kind of transitioned into sketching with pencil primarily for these zoo sketches um i'm kind of an ink ink person i like drawing with ink but for some reason just Sketching animals with pencil is really nice. I love the variety of line darkness you can get with these pencils. Um, and also like line width, you can, you know, there's just a lot of different kinds of lines you can make. Um, and if you want, you can like get these big thick lines by turning it on its side. Um, so it's almost like a more variable ink in a way. You can like, you know, sketch underneath really lightly and then finish with a harder line. It's great. I love sketching with these pencils. So most of the zoo sketches are with these. There's some that I maybe touched up with ink afterwards or just did on the spot with ink. But for the majority, I think they're all pencil. These are some goofy birds. This Woodland Park Zoo is where I go. They have a giant walk-in aviary, a bunch of waterfowl. And then they also have some like pens that you can't go into, but you can see them real close. Um, there's lots of goofy birds out there that I never would have seen if I hadn't been, so... But yeah, this is a red-legged Sirima. I think that's how you'd say that. This is um some kind of goose. Let me have flamingos, of course. There's also a tropical rainforest walk-in area that's all humidity controlled. They got these goofy sake monkeys. They're eating some pineapple here. Um, and they also have a big walk-in aviary there. And there's just like a bunch of tropical birds like on a canopy above you. And you walk onto a bridge and they fly and land right near you you can watch them eat it's pretty fun so that's what that is that's just a snake and it's pretty poor poor drawing and then my favorite gorillas love drawing gorillas there's kind of a variety of ways i like to sketch them sometimes i do stuff that's kind of more cartoony they're very easy to exaggerate and play with the features other times I'll do something a little bit more realistic, direct. Sometimes I'll do stuff that's kind of like uh, 
more of a charcoalish approach where I'll highlight the um or I'll outline the silhouette and then I'll fill in the shadows with like the side and then kind of accent the form shadow. Um but there's two different tribes of gorillas at the zoo and um there's just like an endless amount of poses to draw. They're very pensive. You always see like gorillas in like movies and stuff like pounding on their chest and swinging around, but for the most of the time they just kind of sit with their arms crossed and meditate and just kind of look around and I don't think they're actually meditating, but it's fun to think that. They're fun. So here's some more gorillas. Um, and the other nice thing about there being a whole tribe of gorillas is if they move while you're drawing, there's probably another gorilla around or there will be soon that's going to be in the exact same pose. So you can kind of figure it out um, from the next next gorilla and finish your drawing. That is a um, colobus monkey. They're kind of like skunk monkeys. They have super long black and white fur. Then we got patas monkeys. Again, same same thing with monkeys. They're just so easy to caricaturize. So I like to draw kind of cartoony with them. Some lions there. They have two females and a male. I like the way this looks right here. I'm happy with the way that face is structured. It's nice. And then that I think that's a warthog right there. Yeah, they just have a very triangular face. That might be from memory, actually. I think I was talking about warthogs to someone. I was like, yeah, warthogs. They're just like a big triangle. There's a Komodo dragon. They're pretty cute, even though they're like probably the scariest lizard alive. They're definitely one of my favorite animals. I think they're very cool. They have some interesting uh, evolutionary traits to them. Um very scary, but very cool also. I love drawing them. They have two at the zoo, and they're always crawling around. And I think they're uh, adolescent because they're only like five feet long, but I'm pretty sure they can get up to like 12 feet long. So they're either small or adolescent. Um, here's some more colobus monkey kind of caricaturized. Um, that actually is a rabbit that's not in the enclosure. <laughs> Um, it's kind of located in like a big park and there's lots of rabbits running around in the zoo. Makes me wonder if they ever like get into the lion enclosure and get more than they bargained for. And then they have penguins as well. Penguins are super fun to draw. And same thing here, like there's hundreds of penguins. So if one of them moves, you can just finish your drawing with another penguin. And there's an endless supply of penguin poses to choose from. Great to take photos too because... You can, yeah, again, same thing, like, <laughs> gives you a lot to work from, from one photo. The, there's a gorilla, yep, those are gorillas. And then orangutans, and that's a wallaby. One of my favorite drawings in the whole book is on the next page. Yep, there it is, the red-necked wallaby. There's an Australasia area, and, uh... Lots of kangaroos, wallabies, wallaroos, emus, uh, Komodo dragons, obviously. I like these. Very kind of cartoony. Still have a little bit of a life to them, realism. This one was sitting in a strange way. sitting on his tail with it coming out the middle. And this is kind of a, a good example of the myriad of ways you can use the black wing pencil or any pencil. Um, we've got like some hard lines, like it was ink. There's some, um, hatching in a softer, um, value that presses hard for the hatching. So it doesn't like take away from the silhouette. And then I also did some sh hard shading with, maybe I shouldn't do that with my finger. I did some hard shading with the side of the pencil. And then I also did like some ink patterning, not really ink, but sort of how I would. Um, it gives like a, it makes the drawing like a little bit more interesting, I think. Um. Even almost went all the way to black for the the paws. Like, what they be called? Paws? Animal hands? I don't know. They like doesn't really feel like a paw because I don't know. <laughs> More gorilla caricatures. Quick sketches. Um, I took some requests on social media of what I should draw at the zoo. This is what I got. 
So a lot of those are in these next few pages. This is a Kia, very strange bird. They're like a dark green with this big curved beak, but when they, um, like they're molting or they like spread their wings, they have like a bright red stripe under their wings. It's really pretty. There's a sleeping lion. This is, um, it's called the Andean cock of the rock. And that's from the tropical rainforest enclosure um, and the tropical rainforest in real, real life. Um, it's hard to explain like how this bird works, but there's like a plume that comes down all the way to the tip of its beak. This one, it's a little bit more shallow, but there's, it goes all the way down to the tip of its beak and just covers the beak entirely. So its head looks like really strange. And it's not like um, a loose plume. It's very like tightly packed feathers going all the way down to the beak. So it just makes its head look like a, a giant like spade um, with no beak coming out of it. Very weird. And they're bright orange and super loud. Here's some links. They have, uh, I think, three different lynxes. Lynx? Lynxes? Is that right? Canadian lynx. The giant paws. That's one of my favorite big cats. I love drawing them. They got lots of crazy little features. Um, I don't know this for sure, but from drawing both, I just feel like the designers for Ahsoka Tano in Star Wars were inspired by the lynx. There's kind of like these horns that come up, like Ahsoka has. And then the little, like, I think they're called Montrals. They're like head noodles <laughs> come down the sides and then there's like a lot of face markings just like Ahsoka it really reminds me of the Lynx so yeah but that's not confirmed I just think that I think that that's true but I haven't like spoken to the Ahsoka Tano designers to know maybe it's just subconscious maybe it's a coincidence I don't know but another snowy owl here's the bears again slightly older than the last time I drew them uh, I really like some of these more like um, hard edged drawings. It just looks very, uh, very solid and like planted. It's a nice simplification. That's an elk. There's always like some chuds at the zoo. Every time I'm over there, there's like some like dudes with like a family and like they're like, I don't know, I guess bored of their mind because they don't like animals or something. Who knows? But it's like they light up when they get to the elk and they say stupid things like, man, if only I had my gun right now. <laughs> I'm like, really? You're at the zoo surrounded by all these beautiful animals. You like get to observe this animal like. And all you can think about is shooting it like, I don't know, it always bugs me. So that's like one of the zoo zoo goer archetypes that I've encountered after being there many times. <laughs> Uh, cause they're, you know, you don't get to see elk up close in the wild ever. Um, it's hard, it's hard to, they're kind of territorial or elusive, um, which is why people hunt them for sport. Um, but it's, they're really great animals. They're just pretty chill. Um, so I don't know what the specific species of elk this is. Maybe like white tail. I'm not sure, but just enjoying the sunshine on that day. Uh, this is the tiger. I went many times. This is across many visits, by the way. I went many times before I saw the tiger. It's a Malayan tiger. It's one of the uh, smallest tiger breeds. And I could never see it. It was never in the enclosure. And then one day I went and it was just right up in the glass taking a nap. So I took a bunch of photos, did some sketches. Um, super stoked on it. I think there's some more in here. This is... Oh, this is the... Um golden mandarin no golden lion tamarin monkey is that right yeah golden lion tamarin monkey and it's uh no is it tamarin mandarin i don't remember my brain is crossing wires right now they're these really cute like squirrel sized monkeys that are like bright orange um in the tropical rainforest i don't know what was going on there i think i was just messing around with the new pen that's um, from the Asian Art Museum. Uh, this week of drawing is from the zoo in Boise. I went and visited Boise for the Treefort Music Festival and uh, went to the zoo to sketch in the morning. So we got some baboons. It's a pretty good zoo. Um, Woodland Park Zoo kind of puts a lot of zoos to shame because its landscaping is like next level. It's The animals are like 
so secluded, but you can still see them so clearly. It's really great. And they all have like um, the ability to hide and go into their enclosure if they want to. Um, the Boise Zoo was kind of barren of trees and the animals were kind of just like always on display. I wasn't a huge fan of that part of it, but I think it still does like a lot for conservation. Um, so I don't know. You win some, you lose some. Spoiled with my local zoo. But anyways, there's lots of great animals. That I think it's technically called Zoo Boise to sketch. And so I did. Uh, we got baboons. This is, again, more of the uh, kind of charcoal style with the hard form shadow. And then shading with the side of the pencil. These are vervet monkeys, I believe they're called. They were super active, and they were kind of funny. They sort of reminded me of cats, just, like, running around, um, chasing each other. And um, they're very, like, they had the zoomies when I was there, running all over the place. And there was this crowned crane, which looks like it has a pom-pom on its head. It's a fun bird. Um, Zoo Boise had lots of animals that I'd never heard of before, which is always cool. Um, one of them was the Nyala, I think is how you'd say that. They're sort of like a antelope adjacent um extreme sexual dimorphism the um female looked way different than the male it's really cool um so if you're interested in that definitely google that animal um they had a very old elderly warthog which is just hilarious to me for some reason it's just like the warthog is already kind of an exaggerated animal so then make it like extremely elderly and wrinkly and it just i don't know it's funny it had huge tusks um it was a good good animal. Sleepy crocodile. Getting to the end here. There were capybaras in multiple spots in Zoo Boise. I'd never drawn a capybara. Um, I don't think ever. Not even uh, like from photos. Um, but they're very cute little rectangular guys. Big like leathery hands paws again i don't know what to call them they look like hands but they're not um yeah they were cute they were taking a nap together snowy owl here oh, no this is a, a barn owl uh southern ground hornbill i got some great photos and videos of it was like it ran out from it's like little hole in the wall to like show the guests it seemed like it's prey that it had not even killed <laughs> It had like a dead rat and it ran out with it in its mouth and then swallowed it whole. And this is like a big, large bird, like bigger than a turkey. Um, and then later it did it with a little baby chicken, like a chick, um, and like tore it in half. It was very much a like nature is metal moment. It was crazy. And then uh, definitely the best part of the whole zoo visit for me was Papa. It was like this tiny little gibbon. Gibbons are pretty small, um, but tiny little gibbon. It was sitting on the ground. Uh, like all curled up, just like kind of giving me the side eye, and it had like a, a like a a dead eye. Um, and I was like, "What is wrong with this guy? Is he okay?" And then the zookeeper came by and was like, "Oh, hi, Papa. How's it going?" And then uh, she told me that he was forty-seven years old, which is very old for a given, and it's just kind of like an elderly old man who can't swing around anymore because his joints don't work. So. That was like the highlight meeting this uh, goofy little guy. So I sketched him a lot. There's a couple more sketches of him in here. We got a snake. That was just kind of an exercise in like form rendering. Um, tiger skull that they had. Giant anteater. Weird animal. They were like the strangest proportioned animal I've ever seen. They don't make sense when you look at them walking around. And then. Uh, Oh, this is the barn owl. Yep. No, greater horned owl. My God, the owls. They're owls. Okay. That's a screech owl or a burrowing owl. This is the horned owl. Now I'm remembering. Um, I did lots of drawings at this zoo. It was a good day of drawing. Sometimes you go to the zoo and it's like, man, nothing's really out. Nothing's really working. Um, the lighting is weird or they're super far away. Other days you go to the zoo and it's like... You can't draw enough. And so, thankfully, since I was at this new zoo for one day while I was on a trip in, in uh, Boise, 
like it was a great day of drawing. The animals were all out and about. Again, at the Woodland Park Zoo, they have the option of being out, where I don't think that's as much a thing at Zoo Boise, but still, it was just a good day. Um, there was this big male lion with like a, he had like a mixed mane. Some of it was like a lighter color, and then some of it was black. Um, that's a lion skull they had on display. Did lots of sketches of him. Um, there's a Patas monkey again. I love that drawing. It's one of my favorites in this book. They have those in um, Woodland Park Zoo as well, but they're always kind of far away on a rock. This one was like inside right up against the glass, so I could I was literally a foot away when I drew them. Really cool. More cappies. Um, see what I mean about the, the hands, not hands thing? Strange. Don't understand it. This I added the ink to after the fact. This is kind of a hard thing to do on site because the zebra is going to be moving around. So getting all those details in and like figuring that out is kind of hard. But I just took a bunch of pictures and then just filled in my sketch later. I always take tons of pictures when I go to the zoo and I need to like sort them into a folder, but I haven't done that yet. But it's great because you kind of develop some like visual memory and detail retention by sketching it and observing it in real life, but you don't always have time to put all that in. So then you can look at your photos later and um, fill in the gaps and you can also then draw from the photos and like further develop your visual memory of it. So I take lots of videos and photos of the animals and then looking at them jogs that memory of being there as well. So just keeps it nice and fresh in my mind. Uh, baboons again. There's the vervet monkey again. Kind of a comparison in the same pose. I, that was unintentional, but it's kind of cool. Um, the vervets were much smaller and um, squirrel-like and cat-like. Um, long tails, springy, and the baboons are like just the chonkiest little square monkeys. Um, I didn't realize that about baboons, but when I saw them, I was like, wow. That's like just like a barrel of monkey. It's <laughs> so round and stout. Uh, Miss Papa again, brush pen that time. It's a little safari jeep they had, and I think that was just someone at a coffee shop. This is from a picture from the the next day. I was just drawing in a coffee shop, drawing from photos that I took at the zoo. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Looks like maybe a floral arrangement of some sort. Not sure. This is also in Boise, Boise Art Museum. There wasn't as much there to draw as I thought there would be. Um, they had like a printmaking exhibit, which was um, all like very graphic design kind of stuff. So I didn't want to sketch that. And then um, like kind of almost like collage painting stuff. So that also wasn't very good to sketch. So I sketched this one mask and this weird sculpture, and then that was it. And this is a week later back at the Woodland Park Zoo. Almost to the end here. Um, but these drawings, to me, look way more confident than some of the ones earlier in the book, which is really cool. It just goes to show, like, if you do anything enough, you're going to just develop a lot of speed and skill. And um, I, this is, like... This drawing right here, I'm like, okay, I don't think I could have done that like even five months ago, six months ago with a photo reference. Like there's just something about that that was born out of my sketching at the zoo. Um, the way I hatched, the way I did the line art, um, my like touch to it. Like there's just a kind of energy to it that comes from that sketching from life that you can't really get from photographs or, you know, memory. Um and it's kind of infused into that. So I'm a big fan of that drawing. It like, to me, is kind of like shows the improvement in the book. When I look at the earlier drawings and then I look at this one, I'm like, okay, yeah, it was worth it. So all the bad drawings led to that one. So that's a plus. Um, there's the Saki monkey again, a toucan, the Kune Kune pig. He's way chonkier than that. I'm looking at that now and like, he should be maybe like this wide. He's huge and like big feet too. I looked up what these things are. They're called waddles, I think. Um, and they're just like weird fleshy protuberances that a lot of pigs have. They don't do anything. They don't serve any purpose. 
They're just these gross little fleshy hairy tubes. Thanks, Mother Nature. I love these drawings too. Super quick kind of like figure drawing of these gorillas. This is like the huge male silverback gorilla that's like kind of aggro sometimes. Just taking a taking a little uh, nappy. I'm surprised he wasn't like sucking on his thumb. It was like such a serene childlike moment for this huge like 400 pound gorilla. Uh, Komodo again fell off the page. Oopsies. This I was specifically trying to exaggerate the um, posture and pose of the gibbon. Um, and it worked out. Um, they're just the really long, spindly, weird guys. It's a sea monk, sorry, not a given. Um, closely related, but these are the ones with the inflatable sac in their throat. But yeah, I like how that one turned out. Good hatching and stuff too. And then these are the um, just straight to silhouette drawings I was trying. I want to do more of these. Um, it's a really good way to kind of practice design. And uh, I don't know, they're, they're kind of fun. Like I, I like this. This would be maybe like a cool tattoo or something. Here's the emu. Nice sketches again. A couple different styles here of rendering that form. This one looks kind of like Big Bird with the legs. <laughs> um, this is the lynx actually taking a bath, but I didn't finish it. Uh, the bears again, you can just like tell that that bear is way bigger. Like that's the same ones from earlier, but that is an adult bear almost like that's, I'd be a lot more scared if I saw that than a cub. Although I guess when you see a cub, you should still be scared because that means mama's close by, but, um, hippo with the head that's way too big. I like these, um, little, I think they're gazelle or antelope, um, they're just quick, and uh, like if this was scaled down and in the background, it would look great. So I like the simplicity. Simpl simplicity. I like how simple they are. Um, this is me studying, I think, from a photo I took, and then this was actually from the zoo. I think, yeah, I'm like way more confident to do straight to ink stuff when I have like a very still subject. But drawing like that from the zoo, it's like a lot harder to course correct if the animal moves or, you know, I have to fill it in from imagination. Um, I need like some more guidelines and stuff in pencil before I can do that. So I think that's part of why I like using the pencil at the zoo. It's also just fast. It's a really fast um, tool. It's so smooth. And then this is actually, unfortunately, like my least favorite drawing maybe in the whole book. Um, it was Star Wars Day yesterday, and so I was like, okay, I love to finish my sketchbooks with the Star Wars drawing, and I have one page left, so this is perfect. So I just did this from imagination at a, a little coffee shop, and it looks like he's about to fall over backwards, basically. Um, it is just like a quick sketch. I could workshop this into something better with a couple more layers on top of it. Um, but I don't know. It's just like, meh. So <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm going to do this sketch, and then I'm going to do a sketchbook tour. And then I did the sketch, and I was like, maybe I won't do the sketchbook tour. But that's not what it's about. Sketchbooks are for making mistakes, improving. And I think if you look at these animal drawings, um, specifically this page, um, like this compared to some of these earlier drawings that I did, like this kind of thing compared to this, that's what the sketchbook is about. So... I'm just going to, you know, show you this one and uh, don't hold me to it. The next Darth Maul drawing I do will be so badass and cool. Just um, don't expect me to do it like anytime soon because I'm busy. I got to go to the zoo and draw. So that's me sketchbook. Thank you for watching. Um, I have another one that's getting pretty close to finished. Maybe I'll do a tour of that one too. I'm going to try and edit this one and uh, throw it up. But editing takes long time so i don't know maybe it'll be june by the time this gets up i have a kofi if you want to support me you can do a one-time donation or if you become a member it starts at 450 a month 
You get art in the mail every six months. I do monthly giveaways. You get discounts on my shop and on commissions. You can read my comics. And it gives me nice monthly income, which is the best. So see you next time. Oh, oops. <laughs>